Welcome, world champs of the wrestling hour, because everyone has something they call their viewers. So I thought, may as well call you world champs, because that's exactly what you are to me. And I love you all who watch, who have watched this show for the whole year of 2017. I wasn't, I don't know if the show was on the whole year. My memory is not so good as it used to be. I'm getting old. Nick, Nick's getting old. Uh, so, but welcome to the final, final episode of 2017 for the Wrestling Hour, who's, which has been on the air for off and on for about 10 years now. 2017 was a big year for the show. Um, we had something, <laughs> we had a lot of things happen. We, ha we, we had something happen that was pretty big. We hit 10 years. Now, I'm looking forward to 2027, which is 20 years. Can I do it? Can I actually get that far? We'll see. First, we got to make it to 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. But hell, I'm just along for the ride. You know, I'm looking forward to it. So, um, before we dive into today, to today's wrestling show, wrestling hour, um, I first like to thank Bcam for. Uh, <coughs> Allowing me to come on the show, come into their studio, working, working all their stuff, driving them crazy, <laughs> and uh, just really making life better. That's what, that's what the game's all about. And producing good quality television is what it's all about, folks. All right. So, and as you can see, behind me is the old Wrestling Hour logo. Our title screen, logo, title screen, whatever. That's gonna be the all the uh. This is gonna how it's gonna be from now on. No on-screen graphics, no nothing. Just the background, me, and a piece of paper. Cause really, that's all the show's ever been. <laughs> no. <coughs> um. I guess if there's one thing I could say to you guys who watch this show, all of you who watch this show, my world champs is thank you for watching me for the year of 2017. I am looking forward to 2018. And I am also looking forward kinda to the anonymous arresting hour GM uh, who's gonna be texting. I was informed. It's probably, it's probably gonna be an email or a text. So not sure exactly which one. Hopefully we'll, um, so we can hear this, hopefully we can, uh, yeah, we'll be able to hear it. So the uh, new Wrestling Hour anonymous GM is going to text me or email me, one of two, and we're going to um, hear from him or her. Not sure exactly. Um, actually, I actually have no idea who it is. <laughs> but today is good, the end of the year episode for the wrestling hour and I have a new, well, do you remember years ago how I used to do end of the year awards now for the WWE <laughs> I'm going to be doing that today and I'm and and I have a end of or uh, end of the year awards and and I have a wish list for the WWE uh, for 2018. You know what, let's get to the wish list. It's really no particular order, um, <coughs> although, <coughs> excuse me, I should probably start with number 10. Um, <coughs> start with number 10. Number 10, for my WWE wish list, for 2018. Alright. Number 10. Women continue to main event. This particular um, wish is something that uh, 
is really important to me. It's important to the wrestlers, the, the female wrestlers, the beautiful women in the WWE who get out there every night and bring, lay, lay it all in the ring. You know, they bring it all to the ring and they kick major butt, major ass, all right? And um, that's something that wants to continue. Now, will they main event WrestleMania? That's a whole other story. But I believe one day they will. <laughs> um, but that's that. I want number 10 is women continue the main event. That's my wish list. Uh, number 10 for 2018. All right. Okay. Next one on the list is number nine. Uh, the brand extension ends. I've never been a big fan of the brand extensions. Um, I don't know. I know it makes it easier in the wrestlers. It's got to make it easier at least a little bit uh, to, uh, <coughs> you, you know, all the travel, everything. But I also believe that um, that it really having two world titles kind of dim diminishes or devalues both of them. Um, I can understand maybe having two tag team titles, one for the women, one for the men, but I just don't see how that's going to really work. Um, how they're going to have two two world titles, tag team titles, uh, two women's titles, two, I suppose there's not two cruiserweight titles. Um, but I feel that the brand extension needs, it needs to end. So that is number nine, or number number nine, for the Wrestling Hours wish list for the WWE, not number nine, this is like number six, for the WWE for 2018. Um, and, okay, let's get to number eight. New stars are made. The WWE needs to stop relying on part-timers, like, like Brock Lesnar, <coughs> uh, even, even Undertaker. They need to stop relying on part-timers, even like, even like Triple H is a part-timer. Even John Cena is a part-timer right now. So, um, new stars are made. Yeah, they need to make new stars. Uh, they've done pretty good with Seth Rollins, Dean Ambrose. Um, but are, is there really a Stone Cold level character? Stone Cold level star, and a Hulk Hogan level star, um, even a Rock level star. No, there isn't. Um, I like to say that. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I you know I, I like to think Roman Reigns could possibly do it, but there will never be a Hulk Hogan or Stone Cold Steve Austin ever again. All right, <laughs> that's just gonna be how it goes. Wrestling's changed a lot. And we're not going to have any more Stone Cold, no more Hulk Hogan, you know, um, not even any rocks. So uh, that's just not going to happen. <coughs> so that's just how that goes. Um, hopefully we'll get some good stars made in 2018. Uh, now, XFL. Number seven is the XFL. Yeah, Vince is probably going to bring back the XFL in 2018. Um, how do I feel about that? I didn't really watch the original um, XFL, but I think it should be pretty successful given the stuff that, uh, you know, that uh, the, the NFL is going through right now with all the low ratings, all the, you know, all the, you know, kneeling that's going on. I don't think that's going to happen in the in the XFL. I hope it is successful. Uh, alternatives in competition are never, ever a bad thing. Look at WCW, look at ECW, yeah, kind of, and the WWF in the 90s. 90, like 95 on, WCW and the WWF or the best thing is on television as far as professional wrestling goes. What do you have to watch now? TNA or G, GPA or whatever the hell it's called now? Um, I can't watch that stuff. 
global, I think it's called global championship wrestling. I, 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 I may have to look into that because I, I love professional wrestling. <laughs> but I mean, I try to watch, I have watched, try to watch TNA when it was TNA. But I, I can't, I just can't watch that stuff. Um, does it remind me of WCW? No, it does not. Um, I mean, it, it kind of does, <coughs> but no, I'd say no, it definitely doesn't. Um, so this is how that goes, folks. Um, I hope the XFL is successful because hopefully they'll be able to um, get some cool stuff going. But the XFL coming up, oh, I think it's in 2018. I wouldn't doubt it's in the fall of 2018. Um, <coughs> I wouldn't doubt it. Uh, so that's number seven. Number, now we can do number six. Now we can do number six, right? Number six is NXT continues to uh, thrive. NXT continues to thrive. NXT is run by Triple H. <coughs> so I hope that NXT continues to thrive, be successful, create new stars, and I hope they definitely continue to um, inspire people. So, uh, um, <coughs> Number five, with number five, we're on the one hand now. Number five is no more three-man teams. I mean, NX, I mean NXT, uh, uh, New Day is great. Um, what other three-man teams are there? Uh, oh, there's, uh, wasn't there, weren't the Usos? I know that because when you have a three-man team, even if, it's just, even if it's just, you know, one or two teams, you kind of have to get, that kind of screws up the whole tag team situation. I mean, it's kind of neat when they win the tag team titles and you can have any team members, any combination defend the titles. But, and that helps when one of them gets injured because then you can, if one of them gets injured, then you can have, it doesn't mess up the tag team <coughs> holding the belts. But I just don't like three-man teams. Um, like the Miz Taraj. I'm a big fan of the Miz Taraj. I'm a big fan of the Miz just not the Miz Taraj. Um, although I do like what Miz, I do like the idea of the Miz Taraj, but it, it's that's a three-man team. Not a huge fan of three-man teams. So uh, that is number five for my wish list for the WWE for 2018. Coming up. We're about, well, listen, two weeks away from 2018. This, by the way, this is, a, this is the last episode of the Wrestling Hour for 2017. <laughs> um, so I'm looking forward to 2018 for what's coming up on the Wrestling Hour. You won't believe it. Uh, I don't believe it because I haven't planned anything yet. <laughs> but uh, I'll come up with some cool stuff for you all. In our going into our uh, 2018, is 2018 is the year of the wrestling hour. Remember that. <coughs> um, number four, as in the full horseman, brother, is uh, less pay-per-views. I think Vince is actually going to lower the amount of pay-per-views, <coughs> but Vince really needs to get the amount of pay-per-views down in general. He needs to get them down to, I'll, I'll tell you after I get done drinking here. Touch a little dry. Um, <coughs> sorry, folks. Uh, yeah, less pay per views. The pay per views should be Royal Rumble for January. Um, eliminate. They can do Elimination Chamber for uh, February, maybe for February, early March, <coughs> and for April or for late March and April. There's the granddaddy of them all, or the big boy of them all, WrestleMania. And then maybe for this, maybe skip a month or two, and then have money in the bank in July. Or maybe June or June or July, <coughs> have money in the bank. Then in August, end of August, have SummerSlam. And then maybe between that, have something on the WWE Network called King of the Ring. 
and not just some stupid uh, tournament on Raw. And um, King of the Ring used to be King of the Ring used to be so much better, so much more important. Um, and for the fall, for the fall, we're gonna have a WCW pay per view, a WCW named pay per view that I've always liked. Halloween Havoc. They're gonna have that. Uh, at least should have that in October for Halloween, obviously. Uh, preferably be on or before Halloween, right? Or pre preferably, preferably on Halloween if that's possible. If it's, if it's on a Sunday, you know what? They can even do that on Halloween, no matter what, on the WWE Network. If it's on a Monday or Tuesday, we're on SmackDown air. Do it on Raw or SmackDown, right? So um, then Survivor Series, then we start all over again for the next year. Royal Rumble, Elimination Chamber, WrestleMania, and so on and so forth. <coughs> so how many pay per of that? That's Royal Rumble, Elimination Chamber, WrestleMania. What did I say after that? Um, Money in the Bank, SummerSlam, Halloween Havoc, and what is it, Survivor Series after that, and that's it. So that's what, seven pay-per-views. That's seven. That's more than enough. That is more than enough pay-per-views for the year, for 2018. And um, so now that's what I believe. Uh, that's, what I, that's what I think should happen. They need to lower the amount of pay-per-views, but they also need to increase the amount of uh, both brand pay-per-views. <laughs> if they're gonna do something like having, um, like having, oh, Survivor Series, Royal Rumble, be a you know multi-brand uh, pay-per-view, they need to increase those kind of pay-per-views. I think. <laughs> Maybe keeping that an even number. Maybe have like two or three. Be like out of the seven I mentioned. Be like. Um, Multi-brand, cross-brand, you know, but have the others in those WWE Network specials be um, be uh, just Raw or SmackDown. So, and but that is what was that number? That was number four. I'm gonna I'm gonna shave number three uh, for the final one because you might be surprised at what it is. My wish list. For the WWE for 2018, um, <coughs> I think I went over this a little bit earlier, but number two is less championships. They have two world titles, two tag team titles, two women's titles, the cruiserweight title, and I believe that might be it. Oh, the US title and Air Continental title. I'll tell you what title, that's too many. I'll tell you what titles I need. One, one, one world title, <coughs> one tag team title, one women's title, intercontinental title, maybe United States, and uh, cruiserweight. You want know to take away the United States and keep the cruiserweight. <coughs> so all they need is like five belts. The world title, tag team, women's, intercontinental, and cruiserweight. That's all they need. They don't need like 700 different championships. <coughs> um, they really don't need that many titles. Uh, that's, what I, that's what I think. That's what I think is going to happen. Eventually it's going to happen, but I think it should happen in 2018. So let's go over. Um, let's recap. Let's recap. Um, number 10 was Women Continue the Main Event. Uh, number nine was the brand extension ends. Uh, new stars are made is number eight. Number seven is at, at XFL is successful, which is coming back. Yeah, believe it or not. Um, six is NXT continues to, to thrive. Number five is no more three-man tag teams. Uh, number four is less pay-per-views. We're saving number three. Number two is last championships. 
And number one is more cruiserweights. Not more cruiserweight titles, more cruiserweights in general. All right? And um, so hopefully we'll get more cruiserweights in there. Hopefully get them all, you know, all competing together and uh, competing uh, on, in the squared circle <coughs> and amazing us all. This is how it goes, folks. Amazing the WWE Universe over their abilities and talent. What did I just say? Ability and talent. Um, so what do you do when you're on television? <coughs> like I am right now. You bring about the best of yourself. The very best. And you don't allow anyone anyone to bring you down to well I sound like storm right now to not alter the way you do your life and the way you do everything that you do in your circle corner of this world and the very fact that <coughs> people who talk about wrestling, then go talking bad about someone who hosts this show is not just disrespectful to the wrestlers, not just disrespectful to me. Hell, I don't do this show to be respected by people. I don't do, I don't do this show to be liked. I do this show for professional wrestling and for people who love it, people who have passion for it, People who <coughs> love it, people who, for the wrestlers, for the women, for the guys who do this, and for the people who continue to do it and will continue to do it in the years to come. Not just 2018. I'm talking about 2019, 2020, and beyond. <coughs> so, can going to talk about wrestling on VCAM on Channel 15. Make sure you actually have... Uh, some actually good things to say. Because I'm just sick and tired of people talking bad about professional wrestling or talking about professional wrestling, then going on to talk some shit about things that don't really actually matter. And, you know, there are things that go on on this channel that are not good. It's rare that there are things that happen on this channel that don't make sense and if you're gonna come on vcam in our channel 15 any public access station make sure you're actually decent about it there's a saying that goes around there's a saying that goes around <coughs> that i don't like what you say but i'll defend your every right to say it But should you say it? Probably not. So don't come on this channel. Don't come on my channel. <coughs> it's not really my channel. but And talk about professional wrestling in the same breath as talking horribly. Because you do not have the right Oh, that was a wrestling area anonymous GM. You do not have the right, the fucking right, talk about professional wrestling in the same breath, if you know what I mean. Um, so that's my little spiel for the day. <coughs> um, sorry about that. I just feel like I need to get that out. You do not have the right to talk about professional wrestling on this channel. And uh, go to some other shit ass channel because VCAM's a uh, little bit, a uh, little bit special. Just a little bit. Um, it's actually very special. But there are people out there who don't care about, you know, they, they take advantage of every freaking right they have, they take advantage of free speech. Free speech is one thing. Being a, a complete 
Um, taking advantage of free speech is great, but it's not great when you're talking about my love, my passion, my thing, professional wrestling. Professional being the key word for professional wrestling. That's how it goes, folks. So what is number three? What is number three? Number three is CM Punk returns to the WWE. <coughs> so will that happen? We'll have to see in 2018. Um, hope he does. Uh, then we have end of the year awards. But you know what? Let's see what the anonymous wrestling hour GM has to say. Get ready, folks. Do you remember what he said last time? I do. Dear wrestling hour viewers. Dear wrestling hour viewers. <coughs> um, in 2017, you saw the best and the worst of the wrestling hour. Now, in 2018, you're about to see the best of the show. Um, what the hell is this? Although I may have to replace Nick as the host of the wrestling hour. No, I don't like this. Um, and it goes on to say, Nick has been hosting for 10 whole years and he's not doing a good job. Who's ever... Okay, I'm not going to read the rest of that. It's garbage. How do I turn this crap off? I'm turning this phone off right now. Okay. And we're not going to touch that again. <coughs> I, I'm going to personally, when I meet this GM, I'm going to personally fire him. Or her. He's going to be fired. Him or her is going to have one hell of a bad day. <coughs> wow. Crazy. Um, but we have end of the year awards, which I'm going to do towards, uh, we can do them now. Um, end of the year awards. So let's, let's recap the, my total complete wish list for 2018 for the, for the, uh, WWE women continuing to main event is number, is number 10. And the brand extension ends is number nine. New stars are made is number eight. XFL is successful is number seven. Number six is NXT continues to thrive. Uh, number five, no more three-man teams. No more three-man tag teams. I don't like those too much. Um, number, number four is less pay-per-views. Um, number three is Sam Punk returns. <laughs> number two is less championships, and number one is um, more cruiser weights. So that's my wish list for the WWE for 2018, and hopefully we'll get some of that <laughs> happening. Um, let's, uh, uh, okay, so we're gonna go to our end of the year awards for 2017 for the WWE. <laughs> Who do you think is wrestler of the year? Who do you think is a wrestler of the year? We'll get to that at the very end of the show. I'm going to go through the other awards right now. We're going to go through um, uh, are, are there four, four, I have going to be five total awards on the wrestling hour for 2017 for the WWE and we're going to uh, <coughs> we're going to um, be going over that. Let's go over it right now. Stable of the year is um, the shield is stable of the year. Now, why do I choose the shield? Well, they are the most popular team, the most interesting team, and the most high flying, like death defying team, right? Have you seen the matches with um, with uh, the Wyatt family? Go back a couple years ago. I chose them because they are the best team in the WWE right now. 
although they are a three-man team. Although right now they're two because Dean Ambrose is actually injured now for a little while. Uh, forgot I forgot to mention that. Um, but manager of the year, Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman's manager of the year. That's just, that's up for obvious reasons. He's a uh, first of all, one of their only managers. <laughs> Second, he's one of the greatest uh, greatest talkers in the business, alongside Roddy Piper, Bobby Heenan. <coughs> so, um, Paul Heyman's manager of the year. Tag team of the year is a new day. They have been together for a good few years now and they are still going strong. I always look forward to seeing them. I think they'll be around for a while longer. Uh, so congratulations to the new day for the tag team of the year. Uh, women are woman wrestler. Woman female wrestler of the year. Drum roll please is Alexa Bliss. Alexa Bliss is a Women's Wrestler of the Year for 2017. Now, why did I choose this? Because she replaced Charlotte on Raw as the top women or top woman of the WWE. I mean, let's be honest. Um, it could have been Bailey. Could it have been, no. Could it have been um, Charlotte? Could it have been Natalia? Who's, was all, they're all considered, but I, I don't think they really pulled off what Alexa Bliss pulled off. So, and our wrestler of the year is, I'll get to that later on, because I'm not telling you right now, but you might be a little bit surprised as to who I chose. Um, put my phone down there. <laughs> so, who do you think? is going to be on the show in 2018. Well, well, I like to have Jay on the show. I like to have Jay back on the show. I'd love, love to have Steve back on the show. But um, who else could be on the show? I want someone brand new to be on the show for 2018. For the first three months of 20, oh, well, no, that's because that's a winner. Maybe in the first s summer, well, let me tell you, this summer <coughs> is the summer of the wrestling hour because I'm going to do a show each and every freaking week. So look forward to that. Look forward to an exciting 2018. Woo! For the wrestling hour. Coming up in a few weeks is 2018. By the way, hope everyone has a great Christmas coming up. It's the holiday season. And what well, today's the 21st, I believe. And we have like, what, four days till Christmas? Um, so I'm looking forward to that. And uh, I'm looking forward to, by the way, <coughs> I guess I should come up with a little bit of a Christmas present for you all. Um, I don't know what that could be. Um, you'll find out on the next episode what the Christmas present is. A little belated. But you'll find out. I'm going to try to make 2018 a surprise-filled show. A surprise-filled year, I should say, <laughs> for the show. Uh, I hope you'll stick around for 2018. Things, this show has been around for 10 years. Now, for entering 2018, what could possibly happen on the wrestling hour in 2018? Well, Let's stick around, and I hope you will, because I love you all, my royal champs of the wrestling hour, and uh, <coughs> I really do love you all, you know, whether you treat me like trash, whether you love me, whether you hate me, I still love you all, because uh, you're my loyal viewers, I don't like saying fans, I don't like saying fans, because that's one thing, it makes me sing kind of kooky, kind of crazy. Like, oh, I have fans because I'm on TV. No, it's actually not how it works. Um, <coughs> but, you know, it's interesting because you can be on TV 
and still be, you know, the same person. You don't have to act tough. You don't have to act like a jackass. You know, you don't have to act like a, oh, like a, anything different than you are. The best self you can be is yourself, right? At least I think so. But anyway, like I said earlier, I'm not going to get back into it, but things, professional wrestling, <coughs> professional is what I try to be now. Maybe if people watch this show, they might learn a little bit. Because there are people out there who don't like professional wrestling, who are misinformed, who are talking professional wrestling, and another thing in the same breath. I don't think that's doing any servicing, any services. In fact, it's a disservice to the professional wrestlers who, men and women, who sacrifice their bodies, who sacrifice their time with their family to entertain other people's families. So, ask Brett the Hitman Hart, who lost his brother Owen due to professional wrestling, um, who lost many time with, yeah, he lost a lot of holidays, Christmas, speaking of Christmas, he lost a lot of Christmases with his family, because he was out entertaining other people's families. Ask Bret Hart about all he went through to entertain me, you, and your family, families, families, whatever, throughout the years when he was, ask any professional wrestler who has a family, who is married, who is out there performing, entertaining your children while their children are sometimes at the shows, yes, but that's only when it's in their hometown or their town where they live, usually they get, you know, tickets that can come to the show, you know. But when it really comes right down to it, they don't get to spend time with their family because they're doing something they love, which is professional wrestling. That's so they're doing something they, they absolutely love. They love it. So they'd rather do that. Well, I wouldn't say they'd rather do that, but they love doing it so much that most marriages don't survive the world of professional wrestling. Ask, oh, <coughs> virtually any wrestler. Ask, uh, I think, I think, you know what? I think Rowdy Roddy Piper said it once. Marriages don't last in wrestling. <coughs> they just don't. Um, this is how it goes in the world of professional wrestling. Speaking of Roddy Piper, great talkers in a world of wrestling. I mean, Rowdy Roddy Piper is great. He was, he made you mad. Remember my tribute show for him a couple years ago? With Tyler? I'll get him back on the show too. Dang. 2018 is going to be fun filled on his show. I'll guarantee you that. So, <laughs> now, who's my wrestler of the year? In case you forgot, I'm going to reveal, re, re, reveal my wrestler of the year for 2018 coming up in a couple of minutes. Now, what can I possibly do for 2018? First of all, um, I want to do an outside show. A show that's literally outside. <laughs> and I want to do a show that's not in this room. I, I love to, well, that would be outside, but I love to do a show where I ask people, you know, random people on the street, what they know about professional wrestling. Because I guarantee you, a lot of people don't know a lot. Like, oh, that's that thing Hulk Hogan did. That's the thing John Cena does. I like the New Day. But do they know what these people go through on Raw, SmackDown, NXT, 205 Live, the pay-per-views, <laughs> the hell shows, the appearances, the autograph signings? They don't go, they go through a lot. The travel, the hotel rooms, everything. <laughs> these guys are like superhuman. I couldn't do it. These guys are like superhuman. <laughs> really, they are. Because these guys go through each and every single hardship to do 
that's involved with making a professional wrestler successful in the business. So I'm very passionate about professional wrestling and I hate when people disrespect it because that to me, to me is the highest disrespectful uh, form. And you're disrespecting me when you disrespect professional wrestling. They're disrespecting my work with television, with VCAM, with, with Vermont Community Access Media. They're disrespecting everything to do with community access. Community media is probably the best thing you can have because we're not, oh, speaking of censorship, <coughs> I wanted to talk about this. Uh, it's pretty important those jackasses in the White House voted for this and I voted for Donald Trump. I, don't, I did. Do I regret it? I'm actually starting to. Um, net neutrality. Now, it's not just paying a little bit more. It's not, it's, you're not going to be paying a little bit more, not just be paying a little bit more on your bill <coughs> for uh, social media packages, which that jackass, Mark Zuckerman, said if, or uh, I think that's how it's pronounced, uh, said Facebook will always be free. You're full of shit. And um, uh, I think it's, I don't know how his name is. Um, but not, you're not just going to be paying more. That's just the tip of the iceberg. You're going to not be able to see certain things. If you don't have your social media package, no Facebook, Twitter, or, uh, or what I, I don't know. I did this graphic up at some point on Facebook. There. You can actually see what it is. Um, <coughs> you're, by the way, I'm going to calm down a little bit, <laughs> and I'm going to try to tell you exactly what's going to be happening with net neutrality. We need to keep a free, open, and honest Internet. That's what I am sticking up for in this last 20 minutes of the show. <laughs> I'm going to be sticking up for net neutrality. Now, you might ask yourself, why should I care? Why should I care about net neutrality? Well, they're also the U.S. government will also be able to control uh, what you see on the internet. Now, when I was doing my "This Is How Liberty Dies" show, my conspiracy show, you might ask yourself. Well, when it's not time to be not back, because they're basically trying to work. The United States is going to hell in a handbasket. It's turning into China, and it's actually turning into North Korea with all the censorship. I think Russia has that too. You know, because in North Korea, on the, on the whatever the internet they have there, you're only, uh, if they, I don't know if they even have internet there, you're only allowed to see what they, what they want you to see. So if you want to do a web page about 9-11 conspiracies, you're not going to be able to. But I am sticking up for net neutrality, and it's definitely uh, something that doesn't need to go away. <laughs> it needs to stick around, because those jackass Republicans need to stop for that, especially that uh, Verizon lawyer, or whatever the hell. I can't, it's, it's kind of a weird name I can't pronounce. Um, but I'm sticking up for net neutrality, and this one thing that needs to stick around, because we, we don't need to turn into some type of North Korea clone. Um, <coughs> anyway, back to my passion, which is professional wrestling. On this show, I love professional wrestling. Professional wrestling is something that I've watched for about 20 years. And I've seen a lot happen. 20 years since 1997. I started watching it when I was 11 years old. And I started watching it. I started loving it. And I started having respect for the wrestlers, for the women, and every single person <coughs> who puts their life on the line in that ring, who does the lights, who puts up the ring, who does the music, who does the backstage stuff, everything that goes into making Raw and SmackDown what it is, I love and have respect for. Because they love it. Because they have a lot of respect and love for it themselves. And that should be loved and respected. So, <laughs> but of course, there's the other side of the coin. 
who people don't respect and don't even like, or because they're misinformed about the world of professional wrestling. Is it all, you know, unicorns and rainbows? No, it's not. It's not all unicorns and rainbows. But do they go out there every single week and entertain you, entertain your children while their children are at home on Christmas Day? on birthdays, whatever. We need to have a uh, wrestling revolution where people respect the world of professional wrestling. I love it. I think you, should, I think you should love it too. By the way, I'm looking forward to the VCAM producer party uh, coming up, I think I, said, I think I said on January something, 26th, I think. Looking forward to that. Who's at the door? That's opportunity. And you have the opportunity to, uh, <laughs> to come to VCAM, make a show, and you know what? I haven't actually done that for a while. You can come to Vermont Community Access Media, make a show, and totally kick butt at it if you want. You can be horrible at it. You can do a show about animals, about you know monkeys and uh, I saw this monkey on YouTube. It's hilarious. Are you? Everyone who knows me knows I'm an animal lover, and we can talk about the animals involved with wrestling on a lighter note. Let's talk about uh, the bulldog's little bulldog. Uh, by the way, if you want to see a funny video of a little pug, I love pugs. They're so adorable. <laughs> Ugly, ugly little things, but they're adorable. <coughs> they're not ugly, but they're kind of, they like their face all smushed in. Hilarious stuff. If you want to go on YouTube, look up uh, Pug, Pe Pug, and Pug Pet Smart. Two words. And you'll come up on a video where a dog is told he's at Pet Smart and he's like freaking out. Dog loves, dogs love Pet Smart. Some reason. You know, it's interesting because my dogs, before they were all gone, knew the word treat. They knew that word. They knew what it meant. <laughs> Dogs, animals are actually really smart. More than we give them credit for. So, who is my wrestler of the year? <coughs> I'm going to let you know in like the last minute who my wrestler of the year is. I haven't told you guys yet. I, was, I don't think I have. Uh, <coughs> I don't think I, I, don't, I don't, I mentioned him once during the show. It is a him. It, it is a male. I don't think I mentioned, um, uh, I mentioned him once during the show. He is a former WWE champion. That narrows it down, right? No, it doesn't. Who could it be? Who could it be? <coughs> Who's my wrestler, wrestler of the year for the WWE for 2017? Am I going to... Am I going to re reveal it during this episode? You'll have to see. I mean, I mean, you know, I may not even do that for a few episodes. I may not even do it for a few episodes. We'll see. We'll have to see about that. Um, uh, but, you know, it's... I may not. We'll have to see. But if you've been watching for a while, stretch time. Because I think you've been watching for a while. Uh, stretch time. Got to stretch out the muscles. Ah, uh, it's stretch time, folks. Got to stretch. Because oh. if you've you've been watching the whole hour, I know you have. <laughs> so, got to stretch. Stretch out your legs. You know your legs. Got to stretch out your legs. Oh, that feels kind of good. I got to stretch out your uh, everything. Got to stretch. It's going to hurt. <laughs> I think I pulled something. Um, who's my wrestler of the year? Who is my wrestler of the year for 2017? Am I going to reveal him? I think I will. But you're going to have to wait. Now, um, that Wrestling Hour GM, Anonymous GM, is kind of making me mad a little bit. 
because I don't like how he says I'm going to be replaced. Um, this is my show. So I am not going to be replaced by anybody. Um, I, and I don't, just don't like how that goes. Uh, I'm not going to be replaced because that's just not how it goes. Uh, so that's just how it goes. Um, but, 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 but. Uh, so we're going to review. <coughs> um, by the way, review. By the way, we're going to, um, I'm going to try to find out who that wrestling hour GM is. I'll hopefully be able to find out who it is soon. If I know, I'll reveal it to you all. But I have no idea who it could be. Uh, so we know went over my wish list of the for the WWE for 27 uh, 2018. Sorry, <laughs> for 2018 for the WWE. Um, and I, I still haven't revealed my wrestler of the year. Who is my Nick Brissett's wrestler of the year? By the way, if you're tuning in, there's no graphics right here. Where are my graphics? They're behind me. They're behind me. My graphics are behind me. And uh, <coughs> cause this is what I did before. If you watched years ago, I had this wrestling hour thing set up behind me for a while, for years. So if you, if, if you have any ideas for the show, you can contact me on Facebook. Nick Brissett should know how to spell that. <coughs> if you don't, it's B R I S S E T T E. And Nick is N A C K. Duh, right? But look that up on Facebook. If you'd like to come on the show, you can. Um, it can be for a half hour, it can be for 15 minutes, it can be for the whole hour. Your choice. Or well, if you just have something small to say, come on the rest of the hour and say it. Uh, but I, there's one rule, that you're decent and that you love professional wrestling. That's the only uh, requirement. So I think uh, Mr. Mr. Vcam here is gonna try to get me out of here. <laughs> Six minutes. <laughs> Whoever made that's pretty good. Six minutes. Okay. Well, what am I going to do for the next six minutes or so? I could talk about anything. But I choose and love to talk about professional wrestling. Why, you might ask. Why am I talking about professional wrestling? Why? Because... And why have I for 10 years? Why have I talked about professional wrestling for 10 whole years on Vermont Community Access Media? Well, it's a long story. But basically, do the short version. It's because I love it. It's because I have respect and love for professional wrestling. And respect and love for community public for public community access. Um, it's really something that needs that really should have more people involved. Um, like there, they, there, there's, there's all, you can call VCAM, see when orientation is. You only have to go through that once. So you can uh, go through orientation, you can go through that, you can uh, go through all the stuff they have to teach you. They, and they have classes here too. There's like a video class, there's a, a bunch of classes here you can do at VCAM. And uh, um, there are a bunch of things you can learn. Uh, I've, I've actually never taken a class because I'm pretty basic here. I just do a TV show, well, two. Oh, Nikki the Nerd does two, but he's he's, he's going to be after me. He's doing the show after me, so I'm not a big fan of him. But uh, <laughs> I do live with the guy, so hopefully he'll uh, lighten up soon. Or maybe it's me that has to lighten up. I don't know. Um, but hopefully we'll be able to get some cool stuff. One minute. Oh, you want me to wrap it up? Ken wants me to wrap it up. He's kicking me out. <laughs> so, all right, folks. See you in 2018. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. 
And uh, thanks for watching me for 2017. See you next year. Be good. Bye-bye.